welcome to my channel. My name is Donna K. Delahaye from the blog He's of Delahaye.com. And in today's video, we're going to do a little road trip across the southeast of England. And basically, we're going to go through three spots. The first one is just behind me, and this is the Uzu Valley Viaduct. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. And then we're going to go on from here to Seven Sisters and then to Brighton. So we're going to be seeing a few spots along the southeast of the UK. So as you can see, this is our first stop here. And look how gorgeous this bridge is. I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see. How gorgeous is that? a photographer that's like doing his thing look at that cemetery it's really beautiful <laughs> basically this bridge behind me is considered one of the most elegant viaducts in the in Britain and I'm sure if you follow a lot of UK content creators UK Instagrammers you would have seen amazing photos of people on this viaduct and it's free to go and see it's a point of interest in this area and i would say definitely go and see if you're an architecture buff or if you just like beautiful things and one thing you'll see as you visit the bridge is that overhead you'll see trains passing overhead and that's because the this bridge was actually built to connect london to brighton so this is i think the second to last stop for the stop to brighton Head is one of the most popular stops in the Seven Sisters and it's England's highest chocolates measuring 530 feet. Immediately east of the Seven Sisters, this dramatic headland has beautiful views over the ocean and the sisters. Gap or Portsmouth, and look how beautiful this is. And you can see the tide has come in because the water was way closer to the beach, and now it's like oh, it's so beautiful. Look how majestic this 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 um, white cliff looks right now. Look at this little enclave in the cave that you can just rest from the sun. How cool is that? I hope you guys can see this is Burlington Gap and oh my god it's so amazing like if you want to come here just to relax and have a nice day out no it's not a sandy beach but it's quite a relaxing place and you'll get a lot of people just resting on the pebbles it's a pebbly beach so do bring like a thick blanket if you're coming to sit down because if you don't bring a thick blanket boy these pebbles down here mate they will ruin you they will ruin your knees they will puncture your skin but it's so amazing like the cliffs when you stand next to the cliffs this is how I up the cliffs are and then there are people on the top of the cliff so people that are doing the hike here are like literally at the top of the cliff all the way up there and they're walking on the edge like not the edge but they're walking close to the edge to see down and you're at the bottom and like the pebbles are falling and I can hear them fall I was like I hope this is not the thing falling down but it's like it's so amazing to be out in nature and as I said the water like the um, tide has gone out so you can see all the rocks you couldn't see this when we came like three hours ago but the tide has gone out and look like all the you can see all the rocks and it's gone all the way out and it's also cleared up so another thing you will check for is make sure that if you want to come on a visible day 
definitely check the weather because when it gets foggy the visibility is kind of reduced so if you want to come and see the beautiful place and have a nice day definitely definitely plan your trip and definitely check the weather because even though it's nice when it's foggy it's not that great if you want to take photos if you want to really see all the clues and see how magnificent they are come on a, a high visibility day that's what i would recommend for you guys last stop in the seven sisters and it's basically a cute little walk down to see the cliffs again um, and it's just like this hello, hello. <laughs> the cliffs but you can just see them from this direction So guys, my battery just died on my camera so I'm using my phone so hopefully the audio is good but right now you can see behind me we're at Seaford Head and it's going to be our, my last stop in um, the Seven Sisters in the South Downs and right here just behind me, <laughs> I hope you're seeing it, you can see all the seven, the peaks of the Seven Sisters line up um, next to each other so that's why it's one of the best viewpoints in the Seven Sisters to see all the cliffs and as you can see there's a trail that goes down and what I was saying about the tide um, is far out, you can see the black sand, normally the sea is over that so the tide is really low at the moment so you can even see the really black sand on the beach so it's amazing like this view is spectacular and if you ever come to the uk you definitely have to come and see seven sisters it's something that you wouldn't think is in britain but it's absolutely gorgeous Our last stop on this road trip was to Brighton, however by the time we got to the town centre it was packed and we could not find anywhere to park our car. So we just decided to head straight back to London. As I can visit Brighton anytime, there are direct trains from London Bridge which is quite close to my house. This is just a glimpse of some of the places that you can visit outside of London. And if you want more guides or a detailed guide to the places that I visited on this road trip, then check out my blog at hughesofdelahaye.com. I have a comprehensive guide and visiting Seven Sisters, giving you all the best bits and all the best advice on how to see the cliffs and some of my top tour recommendations. I also have an ebook on visiting the Seven Sisters. And I have more road trips coming up to explore even more of the UK. So definitely stay tuned, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and definitely turn on notification to see when I drop another video. And thanks for watching.